All right, guys, welcome to the class. Um, so we're going to jump right in, and I'm just going to go through a couple of the theory lessons. So this first section is kind of theory lessons uh, before we actually start doing the compositing. Uh, I'm not going to drag it on and, and make it way too long, the theory, but I'm going to touch on uh, a couple of the subjects just to make sure um, we have a, a little bit of a foundation before we jump in and actually start compositing the shot. Um, but I do believe uh, I'm going to bring up the theory as well when we're compositing because um, it's, sometimes it's a bit easier to learn while we're actually doing it rather than just um, looking at too much theory. So quickly, I'm just going to explain to you guys uh, how production works in a visual effects studio if you're talking about a big uh, production studio uh, or even uh, medium size uh, for that matter, uh, visual effects house. Um, so this is kind of the workflow um, and the order of operations, I guess, um, for uh, a visual effects studio. So I'm going to get my draw tool here. And so you can see uh, compositors were always at the end. Um, so if you're working on a team, and this, this project um, pretty much acts like we're acting on a team. Um, so I'm going to be providing you guys some assets, some footage, uh, and that would be normal. So if you're working on a team in a visual effects studio, this is how you would be working. So that's kind of trying to simulate that. Um, but I'm going to quickly uh, just, I mean, you guys might have different levels of experience, so I don't know what you know or don't know. So I'm just going to very lightly touch on these different uh, topics um, just so we can get everybody on the same page. Um, so uh, just quickly going over uh, what each of these departments, what are these people doing? And why does it have to go through all these people uh, before we get uh, to do anything to the shot? Um, so if we just talk about what this is, uh, we have match move. Uh, match move is basically 3D camera tracking and camera solving. So if we, you've taken my previous new courses, we actually did some of that on our own. And depending on the studio you're working in, sometimes you'll need to do your own 3D tracks. Um, but if you're working in a big studio, actually there's an entire department that does the 3D tracking for you. Um, so you'll actually just get the 3D camera and you'll actually get some ground geometry already given to you. Uh, depending on the size of the studio. If you're working more on a freelance job or you're working on your own projects, uh, you're going to have to know how to do that yourself, the match move. Uh, so that's why I teach it because, you know, the best way to learn is your own projects and it's really, really important, you know, to be able to track stuff if you want to learn how to composite. Um, but then again, if you're in a big, big, big production movie, some of those things are going to get handed to you to speed up the process. Uh, next, we would be going... So uh, there's two different um, paths here. I've kind of just uh, done two different sides here. Uh, so the left side is kind of talking about if we're doing something like an explosion, and the right side is talking about something like a car. So I'm going to go over the left side first. Uh, effects is pretty self-explanatory. These are people who simulate explosions. They simulate um, geometry, crumbling. Um, you know, they could do a tornadoes and stuff like that. They're really into particles and oceans and stuff like that. So it's a heavy computer simulation and, and they'll render out an image sequence or movie file of that uh, CG. And when they do that, they'll hand that off to the texturing and shading team. Uh, sometimes, sometimes they'll do it themselves. Uh, so let's say if it's an ocean, they're going to simulate the waves and then they'll give it to, to a team of people that will, um, make those waves look real. So they're going to add the foam to it. They're going to add uh, textures and all kinds of stuff. Um, and then lastly, they would hand it off to the lighting team. So they would just match the light of the real footage. If we're talking about a real uh, composite, so let's say we're talking about a movie like Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, we might have an ocean that uh, was simulated by the effects team, uh, simulated by the effects team, and then it was shaded, and then the lighters... Uh, if there's some real footage, maybe we're standing on a pirate ship and the ocean's in the background, the lighters would match the light direction um, of the waves. And lastly, that would be handed off to the compositor to make it look real and add the final touches. So we have, we're getting an asset that has a lot of work already done to it. Um, but a lot of times it still needs quite a lot of work, um, you know, to varying degrees. Sometimes you get good CG, sometimes you get CG that, you know, it's pretty off and the compositors are basically pulling off miracles. And, you know, that's that's what we're known for. We're, compositors are, are kind of a jack of all trades. You need to know a little bit of every piece, maybe a little bit of particle simulation, maybe, maybe a little bit of camera tracking, uh, some very basic modeling and some very, uh, and probably a deeper understanding of lighting. 
So, you know, a compositor needs to have what's most important for a compositor really is an understanding of lighting and compositing because it, they're close to each other and you need to have that photographic eye. And you need to also understand a little bit about cameras. So that's where we are in the pipeline. Uh, if we explain it for like a CG model, uh, we would be, you know, okay, so match me. Let's say it's a car. So this is what we're doing in, in, our, in our class. So we have a 3D camera tracked scene. We have a car model that was already created. So I modeled that car. Uh, that car has been textured and shaded. Uh, we don't have any rigging. So what rigging is, is uh, if you have a character, you need to have some muscles inside of it and some skeletal structures. Um, so, you know, if we use an example, let's say um, we're talking about an avatar. Uh, somebody had to model the avatar, texture it, and then they give it a skeletal and skin system. And then they'll hand it off to the animation team to actually make it move. And then it will be handed off to a lighter to light it to the scene. And then a compositor will bring it together. Um, so a lot of the times, so that's, that's the workflow of things. It, it, tracking, then you model it, texture it, uh, give it a system if it needs one. Uh, animate it if it needs it, depending on what the object is. And then we light it and composite it. So the compositor, sometimes we have to fix the lighting. Um, sometimes the lighting, they get it relatively close, but it's not it's not 100%. Uh, sometimes it's pretty far off. So that's all good to know. That's kind of the overview of the roles of production and where we sit in the pipeline. So that's what we're going to be simulating in this class. We're at the end of this pipeline. We're getting stuff from all these people. Uh, how can we make it all come together? So just to show you this in another way, uh, this is kind of what you could expect in this class. So if this was a real production, and you were getting assets from other people, uh, this is what you would be receiving. So you would be receiving, um, let me get my tool again. Uh, so we have our, you know, our background footage here. So that's called our plate. And this comes from a department that would be called editorial. So they, they specialize in bringing in elements and footage for you. So this is bring in, uh, kind of given to you. From these, from these guys. Um, then we have some elements. So we have some rain uh, elements, some like kind of textures, and we also have a sky element. So we're gonna have to, you know, bring these together. Um, we're gonna have to kind of take all these assets and make them match. So we have a car from lighting, and we have a ground plane from lighting as well. Um, so we need to make those work together with our footage. And then we also have uh, from Match Move, they just supplied us, and this is me making these things for you guys, but we're talking hypothetical. They've supplied us with uh, a ground plane that's already tracked in case we need it. If we need to, you know, we want to replace part of the ground or project some, some puddles or something like that. Stuff we're going to do in this class. We're going to project some things on the ground. Uh, we have a camera. So in case we want to add some 3D elements or something sticking in the scene, we already have the two uh, fundamental things we need. So we don't need to waste time solving it. And we also have a lens distortion solved. So we don't have to worry about trying to draw the lines and get the distortion. All of this is done for you. And you just get to do your job as a compositor uh, to make that shot come together. So, and then last we, we have our effects. Uh, so just something to note here, um, you'll notice you know, sometimes effects team will send their effects over to lighting and then lighting will send it to the compositor. Uh, but sometimes effects will just send it directly to you and lighting will send you other stuff. Uh, but then you see there's a problem because uh, this light, uh, this effects, it doesn't match the, the lighting of our, let me get red. It doesn't match the lighting of our car and it doesn't match the lighting of our plate. So you can see how that would be a problem, but that's our job. You know, our job is to bring all these elements together and make them match, make them work together. Um, and we certainly can do that with our effects. We can we can do some tricks here to you know make this look like it's filmed in this environment, uh, or make it look like it's coming you know from the headlights of this car. You know, compositors can get away with a lot of stuff. There's a lot you can do. You should think really open-minded, um, and really just. A lot of times it's a hack. Sometimes it's just thinking outside the box um, to try to solve a problem. Uh, 
you know, but if we're supplied with these things, well, we basically build the scene and we also have a lot of creative control. So we're going to add, we're going to create our own um, elements as well. So, you know, the compositor, we've give, been given all these elements, but we're also going to create our own elements. Maybe we'll create some drip elements, you know, simulated in Nuke uh, or, you know, in 2D. Uh, there's other things we can create. Um, so we're going to do all, all that kind of stuff and bring all this together. So that's just the overall production workflow. That's what we're gonna be doing in this class. And uh, yeah, let's move on to some uh, concepts.